everyone. This is Kelly Aiello, founder of HappyHuman.com. Thanks for tuning in. This week, I am super excited to announce the fact that I had the honor and privilege of interviewing one of the world-renowned experts in EFT, Brad Yates. If you don't know what that is, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique, and it's sometimes just simply called tapping. But what makes uh, this blog and interview so special for me is the fact that after my husband Joe sustained his traumatic brain injury many years ago, he utilized Brad's YouTube site and his teachings to help teach himself EFT. He used it to help process some emotions and anger that he was dealing with and to help him modulate his nervous system and relieve some, uh, some stress. So it was very valuable for Joe. It is um, also very interesting because it uses the Chinese Meridian system as a therapeutic tool, but it's a process, a self-help tool that anybody can do for any reason at any time. And all you need are your fingertips. You just simply tap into various meridian points around your body, uh, starting with the side of your hand, moving to the top of your head, uh, and then various locations around your face and body. Doing this will help you move through emotions and any kind of baggage that you're experiencing much faster than if you didn't try this method. It's actually being referred to as emotional acupuncture, but without the needles. So if you'd like to learn more about EFT, if you'd like to read all about the interview that I had with Brad Yates, it was a fascinating one, by the way, so I do certainly hope that you take a good read. You can find the link to the article in the details section below. I will also link to Brad's website and his YouTube channel as well, so that you can get started on practicing EFT with Brad as well. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my videos. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay well, and I'll see you next time.
Hi everyone, this is Kelly Aiello, founder of happyhuman.com. I am super excited to welcome you to my very first podcast on The Nutritional Nerd. Thank you so much for listening. Today's podcast is proving to be a very special one indeed, as I had the honor and privilege to sit down for an interview with Brad Yates, a leading expert in the field of EFT, or Emotional Freedom Technique, which also goes by the simple name of tapping. If you've never heard of this technique before, it's a way of integrating the Chinese meridian system into a therapeutic process by tapping on meridian points around your body with your fingertips. So because of this, EFT can be considered emotional acupuncture without the needle needles. It's a simple self-help protocol that anyone can do on themselves for any purpose and at any any time to help you move through emotional pain, stress, and emotional baggage quickly. So without further ado, I would like to welcome my very special guest, Brad Yates, a leading expert in the field of EFT. Let's hear what Brad has to say about this fascinating technique. (laughs) So this is this obviously this is definitely how I ended up where I am, becoming a natural nutritionist and then a brain health coach on top of that. Um, and so this all of these different natural modalities are an essential integral part of uh, both of our lives. So um, again, I'm very grateful that you you agreed to do this for me. Um, and then of course I'll be happy to send you the link to this blog post and. Uh, I get hopefully I have your permission to link back to your site as well so that people can get started um, practicing with you as well. Oh, please. I, you know, I want this work to reach as many people as possible. So I appreciate the opportunity to reach even more folks. Perfect. Awesome. So how did you uh, first get to learn about tapping? (laughs) It's a question I call, how does a grown man find himself tapping on his face for a living? (laughs) Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I had been an actor and had traveled the world doing theater and then came to Hollywood to be a movie star. Yeah. And in the process of that, I uh, met a woman, fell in love, got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought, hey, you know, maybe I should have a backup career. So gotcha. instead of getting a, a standard nine to five job with a steady paycheck, I trained to become a hypnotherapist. Because I was okay. fascinated with the power of the mind. Yeah. And uh, so I was doing that. And after a couple of years of doing that, our second child uh, came along. And at that point, I thought, you know, as much as I love acting, this personal development work is really my calling. This is what I really feel like I'm supposed to be here to do. Right. So I, so we left Hollywood, moved to Northern California, and through some other hypnotherapists, I found out about energy work. Mm-hmm. And tapping, and so I took a, a went and took a training with a full day training with Gary Craig, the founder of EFT, and just fell in love with it. And little by little, I after that conference, I started, you know, I, I took the online training that he had. I, at that point, it was VHS tapes. You had got a huge box <laughs> of VHS. <tapes>. Right. <laughs> so that's going back yeah, 20 years. Um, and. Uh, Little by little, started introducing tapping into my hypnotherapy sessions, and little by little, they became tapping sessions. And mm-hmm. then, I, you know, I loved that it was something that was simple that people could do for themselves at any time, mm-hmm. and uh, just very, very quick, very simple. And then, uh, around 2007, YouTube was still pretty new at that time. And I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was a YouTube video that people could start their day with? And I'll call it Tap of the Morning. And that was all I ever intended to do was that one video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll put up a tab video. And then it was like six months later that I came up with my idea. I came up with my idea for a second one. And then another three months, I think, before the third one. And then the idea started coming. And now there's over 900 of them. <laughs> wow, nice. Oh, very good. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting how life just kind of pulls us into the areas where we're just meant to be, right? Yeah, if we pay attention. 
Yeah, very true. <laughs> sometimes very it, true. it sometimes it pulls, and we're like a toddler with our mom trying to take us away from the from the playground. It's like no. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, trust the universe. It knows where you are meant to be. Absolutely. Nice. And how would you, if someone has never heard of uh, tapping before, how would you describe it to them? Well, one of the catchphrases is, it's emotional acupuncture without the needles. Mm -hmm. Because it's based uh, originally on acupuncture. And so it's just this very simple stress relief technique of, Instead of sticking needles in our face, we, we tap with our fingertips and it down regulates the stress response, which allows us to think more clearly. It allows us to feel better. It boosts our immune system and we're able to make better choices and have the freedom to take better actions in our lives. Lovely. I love that. And that actually leads into my next question, um, health benefits. What, what would you say would be the main health benefits of tapping? Well, yeah, and the key thing with tapping is uh, is the stress relief, mm -hmm. and you know. And so when we look at all the different ways that tapping is beneficial in terms of you know physical uh, overcoming pain, overcoming inflammation, but also uh, moving quick more quickly through uncomfortable emotions like guilt or fear or anger or pain or sadness, uh, helping us think more clearly and come up with uh, more creative ways to be more successful at work. So it's like, wow, it's this, this panacea that figured that, you know, it does everything. Well, mm -hmm. but it's, it, when we look at it simply as, if we were to look at it simply as a stress relief tool, stress either causes or worsens virtually mm -hmm. every issue that bothers us. Yeah. You know, physically, emotionally, professionally, relationship wise. And so to have a tool that lowers stress it uh, it allows us to heal more quickly. It uh, now there's uh, I have friends doing research that shows that it allows for more positive gene expression. So there's yeah. all kinds of crazy things going on. Yeah. But, um, but the main benefit is is lowering the stress that then allows our body to heal itself more quickly, and allows us to make better choices in terms of our health. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I guess it's so individualized too, right? Whatever anybody needs, <laughs> um, <laughs> they can focus on that. And it all comes down back to the same thing. Yeah. Awesome. The, the, one, of the catch, one of the other catchphrases for EFT is try it on everything. You know, any, mm -hmm. any place in your life that's not ideal, then there is very likely a tappable issue. And even with, with physical healing, even if we don't necessarily see a physical benefit, there's a lot of emotional stuff around um, the physical distress that we feel. Right. You may feel, uh, you know, so for example, with your husband, there's sadness over what um, what's being lost. There is guilt mm -hmm. over, you know, how much more difficult it makes your life yeah. and or how much he's not able to do. Uh, there's fear about what is this going to mean in the long run. Mm -hmm. There's um, anger. There's all kinds of different um, emotions that can come up. And so even if the EFT only processes, helps process those emotions more quickly, it's like, okay, well, I may still have the physical symptoms, but at least I don't have the additional pain of all these emotions going on. Right. Oh, and that, that is, so powerful as well as horrible as it is to be in physical pain I think it's often the emotional pain that's quite worse right? yeah. most of the time we can we can actually heal from a physical break or you know outward damage but it's that deep inner work that uh, that is much more challenging yeah there are many people who have physically healed and but the emotional aspect is still bringing them down and you know, with tapping, the emotional part can be can often be healed more quickly than the physical body can recover. Mm. Well, nice. Okay, and then um, why do you believe that tapping for self love is uh, so important? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> because when we allow ourselves to love ourselves, we naturally treat ourselves better, mm -hmm. and 
in that process, we also naturally treat other people better. So, you know, and, and looking at it as it, it's been said, there's only two emotions. There's love and there's fear. So mm-hmm. as we clear away the fear and allow more love, then we think more clearly, we take better care of ourselves, we make better choices for ourselves and others. And it really starts with us because it's very difficult to give away what we don't have. Mm. And it's very difficult for other people to love us as fully as possible when we're kind of putting out a vibe of, well, I'm not really worthy of love. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't really love myself, so why on earth would you love me? Right. Right. Okay. And then is there, um, I know the answer to this one, but I want to hear it from you. (laughs) (laughs) Is there um, a specific amount of time that people should dedicate to their practice to receive the best results? Yeah, that, it always depends on, you know, with, with, with any, with anything, it's how much time is it going to take? Like how long should you wash your hands? Well, right now Mm -hmm. they say 20 seconds, you know, going through happy birthday (laughs) twice but um but it depends you know are did you uh you know did you just um make some bread and you've got some flour on your hands or have you been working on your car and you have grease all over your hands you know so it's gonna it's gonna depend on what there is to clear Mm -hmm. and and sometimes we won't you know how much should you exercise well i don't know what are your fitness goals (laughs) Right. Half an hour is a good idea for everybody, but if you're trying to buff up for a film role in a Marvel superhero movie, it may take more than a half an hour a day. Right. Um, so it it depends on the goals, and it depends on what's in your way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, how how much overweight are you if you want to get into really good shape? And um, but I, you know, so there, and any amount that you do is better than none. Mm-hmm. I recommend tapping on a daily basis because to me it's energy hygiene. So we have physical hygiene where we generally shower once a day, whether we feel we need it or not. We generally brush our teeth a couple of times a day, whether we think we need it or not. We don't wait until our teeth are obviously have green things growing out from between them and then say, oh, now I should brush my teeth. Right. We don't generally wait until the people around us are holding their nose that we say, ah, yes, now I should take a shower. Right. But in terms of stress, we often we often don't do anything about it. I mean, some people don't do anything about it, no matter how emotionally distraught they are. They they don't do anything to help that. And some people, well, they'll wait until they're really stressed out. You know, so even if someone knows about tapping, it's like, well, yeah, I use it when I'm really upset about something. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like brushing your teeth when your teeth are falling out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I, I recommend uh, at least a little bit of tapping on a daily basis just for energy maintenance. Right. Oh, nice. Excellent. Was that the same and answer then, you had? Yes. <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, with everything else, right? It, it, absolutely, it does depend. But uh, for no, that's great. Um, yep. And is it, um, and again, I know the answer to this one, but is it possible to do too much tapping? I, I suppose it is. I haven't reached that limit yet, and I've done mm. all-day-long workshops where we're tapping for several hours. Uh, you know, and it depends on the person. I okay. have done. I've done two-hour workshops, and you know, and, and that's more than enough for some people. I then when I've done weekend-long workshops, uh, and I'll and then I'll uh, have someone who will come to a, a day-long workshop that I've done, and they'll be like. Oh, one day isn't nearly enough. <laughs> mm. But I've also had I had, did a weekend workshop, and on on the Saturday night, I got an email from a couple that was there, and they said, "Hey, today was one of the best days we've ever had. Thank you so much. We won't be there tomorrow because we're toast." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it, it it depends on the person. I'm I've got a weekend workshop starting tomorrow, and for both Saturday and Sunday, we'll be tapping for nearly four hours straight. Right. Um, most most people, if if there is an upper limit, most people aren't going to reach that. I and I said to folks, you're tapping too much if 
you could be out in the world doing the things that you want to do, but you're stuck at home tapping. Ah. <laughs> if, it, if it's stopping you from living your life, that would be too much because the whole right. idea of tapping is to set you free to do the things that you can do ah. for yourself and others. Well, a great analogy. Um, I wonder if that too has something to do with what all that person has to deal with that maybe there's just too many things or too many emotions that are coming up for them and it's just creating that um, fatigue or the cloud or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, for every person, I find that there's no one right way for anyone. And there's, and, and even with symptoms and, and emotions, there's not like, Oh, well, it's always this that causes that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, it's like when I'm tapping, and to me, it's a very exploratory process of, you know, looking around and seeing, well, you know, maybe it's this that's causing this, or maybe it's that. You know, am I, why am I, am I, am I being lazy? And for me, there isn't anything, there's no such thing as laziness, it's just fear. There's mm-hmm. resistance. Right. Like I'm, you know, something, you know, when I say I don't feel like doing it, it's because I feel like not doing it because it'll lead to something that's uncomfortable. Hmm. Yeah, very true. Nice. Okay. Um, who would you suggest could benefit from tapping? Like, is there any, is it everyone, obviously, but. Uh, who, who could you suggest that couldn't yeah. benefit? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause to me, nothing is so good that it can't get better. Yeah. I, I can't imagine, I am not aware of anyone who is, living at such a high level that I would say, look, don't even, please do not even try tapping because there's just nothing it could possibly do for you. I, you know, everybody experiences stress. Everyone has their rough moments. Mm-hmm. It's not that rough moments are bad and should be avoided, but we want to move through them ideally, I believe, as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. It's like I, you know, it's not a matter of okay, we're going to try to become robots that never experience fear or pain or anger or sadness. These are all part of. I don't believe in negative emotions. There are uncomfortable emotions, but it's all mm-hmm. part of the mm-hmm. spectrum of the human experience. But ideally, it's great to move through them as as quickly and easily as possible, mm-hmm. and everyone experiences them. Right. Awesome. Um, would you, is there like a specific, other than in general, um, you know, obviously everybody in any time there's stress or fear, but do you find that it's um, more beneficial for certain kinds of people? Like, uh, like who, who have you seen get the most amount of um, benefit out of it? Is, would it be, you know, someone who is in chronic pain or is it someone who's got like a deep childhood trauma that? they need to um, bring to the surface and heal? Like, is there anything like that? Or I would say the people who get the most benefit from it are the people who are willing to do it. Mm. <laughs> but, okay. Um, <laughs> but in terms of what group gets the most benefit, I don't think there's a way to, to quantify that because okay. I have seen, you know, people have remarkable shifts uh you know people will talk about life changing shifts in terms of their physical well-being there are people who will talk about life changing shifts in terms of their relationships in terms of their financial well-being how much more money they're making or how much more fulfilling their career is so i i wouldn't mm-hmm. there wouldn't be a way to do a a direct comparison to say Okay, well, this person's healing was uh, or, or shift was more profound or more beneficial because what's beneficial to us depends on from person to person. Because, you know, one person could say, oh, well, I, um, you know, through the tapping, I got this benefit. And someone else would say, well, that wouldn't be important to me. So I can't relate that as a, uh, as a greater benefit. Okay. So, yeah, it'd be, so it'd be hard to, to, to give any kind of quantification about you know what um what would be the um you know what is it most useful for mm-hmm. you know, i'd say well it's at the base stress <laughs> but 
but yeah. that's but because almost every issue that we have there is uh, there's some stress involved even if it's someone working on career goals it's like okay what stops you from taking these actions though you have a stress response when you think about taking that action or you have a stress response when you mm-hmm. try to take that action and and that holds you back because it doesn't feel safe and when mm-hmm. we don't feel safe we have a stress response right so it it just depends on for each person where they are um limiting their health, wealth, or happiness. Hmm. All right. And um, have you ever encountered people who who think energy work, like tapping, is um, kind of out there or crazy or woo-woo? And, and if so, you know, what, what would you say to someone like that? How do you respond? No, it's funny, Kelly. I've never had anyone <laughs> question it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm lying there. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I get comments on YouTube about what I had one. It was so funny. There was a comment on a YouTube video yesterday. It just said WTH, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I wrote, and I thought, do I leave that there? Do I delete it? And then I, I wrote, and I commented instead and said, what a perfect comment for this particular video. Because the video that they put that comment on was the one mm-hmm. on being more open-minded. Oh, <laughs> how ironic! <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah, the irony yeah. was so palpable. Um, I, I couldn't leave it alone. But uh, and I, I was at a conference two years ago, and someone came up and said, "So, would you consider what you do in the realm of the woo-woo?" And I said, um, "You might, but I don't. What I do is science." It's, this is this is scientifically uh, validated use of your body's energy system. That's like saying, would you say that exercise is woo woo? Would you say that the Heimlich yeah. maneuver is woo woo? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but 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 it definitely because because it looks a little strange to be tapping on your face, it uh, it turns a lot of people off and and they have resistance to it. I also right. think that some of the greatest resistance to it is from people who w- they're not ready to move forward. And mm-hmm. so if I come along and say, you could do this simple process and it will change, you know, create changes in your life, they're like, you get away from me. <laughs> right. And the, and the fact that it looks a little strange with the tapping, it makes it easier. It makes it easier to dismiss. Yeah. It, regard, regardless of, of the science, I, in an um, interview I was doing this morning, someone was asking about the, the research, and I said, the funny thing is, a lot mm-hmm. of people who say, well, where's the research? And these are people who don't give a crap about the research, because throughout the day, they're doing things that have has no scientific evidence to back it up, or yeah. they're doing things that the science says that's unhealthy. You know, it's like you'd have somebody smoking a cigarette saying, yeah, where's the research saying that that's mm-hmm. beneficial? I don't know, but I'll show you the research that says what you're doing is killing you. Sure. <laughs> so how important is research to you, really? <laughs> and, and, and it's not to mock – I don't really mean it to, to, to mock or shame anyone, but it's, they're, they're doing the best they can. But mm-hmm. I think that the, the question about the research so often is I, I, want, um, I want to find a way to talk myself out of trying this. Mm-hmm. Even though it's so simple, you can do it freely online. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, you, know, you can do it at home where no one can watch you. There's no good reason not to try it. Right. But, Absolutely. Um, but but people, because I think it scares people that something yeah. could change it, that they will write it off as woo-woo. They'll find some way to dismiss mm-hmm. it. And, uh, you know, and it's too bad. And, and, and a lot of people will come back to it later mm-hmm. <laughs> when, they're, when they're ready. So Yeah. I guess that, that's all fear-based as well. So if yeah. they are resisting, then there's 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 fear. If there yeah, if there was no fear, yeah. there would be no reason to not give it a try. And right. they might try it, and they don't see the result because, you know, it's like if you um, if you haven't been exercising or out there or sweating or whatever, and you go take a shower, you might not notice a huge difference. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go wash your hands, you know, you say, you know, we should be washing our hands all the time. But if we're not aware of how dirty our hands are, we can wash our hands and go, well, okay, I, I, I know that they're cleaner, but I can't tell. And so if someone is not feeling um, emotional distress such that they can see 
a, a, a shift, then they may say, well, that's stupid. That didn't do anything. Right. Or, you know, or it may be something that takes longer term, like, you know, lots of people take vitamins, but, you know, when was the last time mm-hmm. you took a vitamin and said, oh, my goodness, I feel so powerful right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? or, yeah. or someone might, who's overweight might go and say, uh, all right, I'm going to get into shape, and they do three sit-ups, and then they look at their stomach and say, well, I don't have a six-pack, six six pack, so uh, apparently sit-ups don't work. Like, right. You know, we might take a few more. <laughs> Just a right. few more. <laughs> Just a few, just you know, a few. Because <laughs> after three sit-ups, they're not get, those three sit-ups are a start, and they it compiles. But you know, it'll it'll start to do something, but not to any level that they're going to consciously be aware of it. Yeah. But I think tapping is always beneficial. I believe you know, anytime you're tapping, it's it's create it, it's lowering stress, even if it's very subtle levels that is beyond our conscious awareness, but it has benefits. Mm-hmm. Very, very true. Awesome. And I also love your phrase uh, that you use. I use EFT to teach. Um, I really appreciate that. What What do you have to say about that phrase? Or could you well, expand on that from, a little bit? Yeah, it, it, it came from because a lot of people have asked me, hey, I really want to become a practitioner. Do you teach certification courses? And And so the whole phrase was, I don't teach EFT. I use EFT to teach. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm, you know, I, it's like I, a lot of times in my seminars or even just in my short videos, I, it's like I'm teaching a personal development workshop. I'm giving ideas that can benefit, I'm like a, a suggestion of, hey, here's a better way to do this or a better way to do that. But we are resistant to things that will create change. Even if we know it's a positive change, we like things to stay the same. Even if our lives are crap, it's our crap. We know where it goes. We dealt with it yesterday. We're pretty sure we can deal with it today. Something right. new, even if it's you know supposedly better, it's still different, and that and we resist that. So when you know, so we go, uh, people go to personal development seminars all the time. We they hear great ideas like, oh, I'm really excited about that. But part of our mind is like, oh, you get exci- as excited as you want, but we're not going to do anything with this because we don't want to change. We like the idea of change. Mm-hmm but we don't want mm-hmm. it to be different. And so there's this resistance going on. So I am basically using EFT to, to clear out that resistance so that we can learn things more quickly and take things in at a deeper level. Wow, I, I really like that. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> I think all personal development teachers should have people tapping through. <laughs> it's like, you know, if you really want people to get this, help them release their resistance. Because even if they seem all excited, chances are part of them is saying, "Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm loving this right now, but I'm going to leave it behind as soon as I uh, go home." Right. Wow. Okay. And then, um, what? What's your favorite thing to do? Like, how would you? I know. I'm sure anything involving energy work is special for you or to you, but um, what's your absolute favorite thing to do? Do you prefer working with individuals? Do you prefer putting videos out there for the world to see? Do you prefer um, sharing your knowledge for free? Do you, do you like weekend workshops? Yeah. I, my favorite thing to do is the live workshops. Uh, okay. Probably because I'm an actor. <laughs> so ah, a live audience. that makes sense. Uh, you know, I, I just literally just moments before we got on the phone, I, I shot a new video. And I and I love doing that because I love the process of tapping because it's a creative process. Uh, it's in the process of the tapping because I never know what I'm going to say. And in yeah. the process of the tapping, ideas come up. It's like, oh, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought of that before. Uh, so it's, it's a, even when I'm just shooting a video, that's a fun process for me. But to have a live audience there and – you know, when I say something funny to actually get laughter, right, is, uh, <laughs> is very rewarding. And it's just it's just a lot of fun to be in that energetic space. So that and do you, would, that would be my favorite thing. Do you feel that energy? Do you feel a shift in that space often? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And yeah, there's a it's a very powerful thing to do in a group. We so I this, this weekend workshop that we're doing tomorrow, starting tomorrow. You know, we had to shift it online, 
Um, right. So, but but there's still I and I've been throughout the last couple of weeks. I've been doing a series of uh, Facebook Lives and Instagram Lives and YouTube Lives just to try to be supportive of people during this uh, challenging time. And, you know, so like yesterday we had a YouTube Live, and I think, you know, we had two or 300 people. And it's like, okay, great. So we, we're, you know, sheltering in place. We're social distancing, but we're still gathering energetically. We're mm-hmm. all sharing this moment together, and so we can feel that energetically, right. uh, not as not as profoundly as if we're, you know, in a, mm-hmm. in a room together. But there's still it's still something more than if we're just um, doing it separately and it, you know watching a recording or something like that. No, that makes a total amount of sense. Like, I, and the same thing goes with meditation, right? We've done group meditation sessions or all day workshops and on meditation and absolutely the power that you experience when you feed off of each other's energy. Yeah, and when right. everybody is like-minded and focused on the same kinds of things, it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. So I can certainly appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything's energy and we're all connected. Yeah. So, you know, when we're when we're in a shared space and and we're all raising our energetic vibration, it absolutely affects the people that are closest. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Excellent. Have you ever um, worked specifically with a group on brain injuries or brain injury survivors or um, physical trauma victims or anything like that? I haven't actually. I I don't do a lot with physical issues. I have worked with people on physical issues, but not a lot. It's just, um, not uh, something that I know a lot about. I, mm-hmm. I often use the line, "I'm not a doctor, but I played one on TV." <laughs> um, <laughs> days of our lives, I saved Sammy's life when she had a brain injury. <laughs> really? Got hit, a, got hit in the head with a by a car. And uh, <laughs> oh wow. Um, but uh, it's not the most directly I've worked with someone with a brain injury. Um, yeah. But uh, but I can only do it with fictional brain injuries. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I was going to a workshop with someone, and I and, and somehow it came up about playing a doctor on TV. And he goes, oh, it would be good to have a doctor there. I said, yes, but I'm only an imaginary doctor, so I can only work with imaginary illnesses. Mm, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know, I've, I'm always, you know, interested in doing those things, and I've, and I've worked with different groups where, you know, someone will say, hey, I've got this uh, this group of, you know, I'm working with stepmoms and the issues that stepmoms face. It's like, okay, great, and, we, and we'll do a teleseminar and, and work specifically on those issues that come up for someone like that. Mm-hmm. But um, but in my uh, in my practice, that, that isn't one that that has come up in, in – um, that I can rem- at least not, I can't remember in uh, in a workshop if anyone has ever brought that up. Well, I can attest to the fact that your work definitely uh, supports people in that area. So, yeah. Well, if you guys are involved with some kind of uh, support group or something like that that would like to do a, uh, you know, do a a teleclass or something like that. I'm I'm always happy to tap on anything because it's you know it's all energy. There's always something that you know I I never as I said I'm not a doctor. I don't make any medical claims, but mm-hmm. um, I I went I taught it at a um, breast cancer survivor group once, mm. and I said look I'm not gonna you know there are there are people who say oh well EFT um, you know cured my cancer. So, yeah, I will never say that, right. <laughs> that claim. Yeah. But I can help you. I can't. I, I well, I can't make any. In spite of all the the anecdotal evidence and the stories that people have told, I won't make any claims about helping you with the physical aspect. But mm-hmm. I believe that I can help you reduce the stress and the emotional um, disturbance that mm-hmm. that is going along with um, whatever the ailment is. Right, and help you deal with it emotionally. Yeah. 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 Actually, I I am um, collaborating with a. A large group of professionals here in town or in British Columbia, Canada, and um, sometime within the next year or so, we're putting together a brain health coalition. So all the resources, uh, counselors, uh, medical doc or not medical doctors, but um, naturopathic physicians, we're looking at um, 
neurologists and physiotherapists and all these different kind of modalities, putting them all together in order to pool our resources. Um, and as a brain health coach and natural nutritionist, I'll, I'm working on that nutrition piece as well. And um, yeah, I think it. I think it could be a very powerful thing to uh, to potentially collaborate sometime in the future if you if you'd be open to that. I, I'm I'm here to be of service. Uh, you know, if there's, you know, if, if it's, I can make a difference there, that's awesome. I was up in uh, I was in Vancouver in October. Oh. At the uh, the Canadian Energy Psychology Conference. Okay. And, uh, Dr. Patch Adams was the keynote speaker. Oh, lovely! Oh, that yeah, must so have been that must have been amazing. I I <laughs> actually spent spent the whole day with him because I, uh, <laughs> I I I helped him uh, helped him with his um, presentation and we had dinner together. So it was uh, it was wild. It's like I was just hoping that maybe I'd get a chance to meet him and get a picture with him, and then yeah, and then I I ended up spending the whole day. <laughs> That's great. So. Awesome. But, uh, okay, well, I'll definitely um, keep you in mind and uh, be in touch. And then just is there anything else that you'd like to add or let people know? Is there a fantastic um, question that I missed? <laughs> <off and half? laughs> no, you hit all the fantastic questions, Kelly. Okay. Good. <laughs> straight A's, straight marks, gold star. Awesome. <laughs> um, no, you. I, there's a lot of great questions and things I hadn't thought of, so I – um no nothing nothing comes to mind that uh you know but if you but if uh, you know if you think of something later and go oh i wish i'd asked him that feel mm-hmm. free to shoot me an email so awesome. but i'm glad you i'm glad you agree you know when, it's so funny because obviously you know okay we've been on the call for 45 minutes it could have i, I whatever questions you had sent me it might not have taken that long to write them, but it's much more fun to talk to somebody. Oh, absolutely. No, I appreciate that, too. And then I, hate, I hate typing. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. Talking is better. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And then, of course, this kind of leads into, well, the next question or the next question or it's like, okay, well, I don't need to ask this one and that kind of thing. Yeah. So reduces yeah. that redundancy. Yeah. Awesome. And, 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 leads to, and leads to things, yeah, that might not otherwise have come up. Right, right. So, exactly. Awesome. Well, I greatly appreciate your time. And if I do have any other questions, um, how would be the best way of getting in touch? Would it be the like your email, or should I send? Um, yeah, at this at this point, you can you know, I you know, I have my my assistants are there as gatekeepers. <laughs> okay. A lot of questions are we're done and stuff, but at at this point, you're 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 past the gate, so feel free okay. to, to write to me directly. Neat. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks so much. You've got a backstage um, pass. <laughs> nice. Appreciate that. Okay. Well, thank you again so much. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend workshop. Um, even though it is long distance, you know, you're not in, in the physical room with everybody. I think the energy is still powerful enough to transcend that. So. Yeah, um, it'll be the interesting. We're doing it on Zoom, so we'll be able to see people. So that'll be. Oh. I haven't done a workshop like that before. So. Nice. Yeah. So Good. All right. Always open done. to new experiences, right? You know, especially in this day and age, we kind of have to. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. Excellent. All right. All right. It was a well, great pleasure meeting you and your husband, and you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so weekend. much. You as well. All right. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.